Hi everyone, David Maley, and today we're going to do something really interesting. We're going to do moving averages based on previous data from the stock market that we got in the previous video. So please watch the previous video to this that's on my channel on how to get stock market information or stock market data and prices on basically any uh, ticker symbol or company. Now we used Yahoo Finance and there's a process to get that off of uh, or through Python. So please go back and watch that video if you haven't watched it already. So this is the data we pulled from that video on Tesla, right? And uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the style for the plotting for later on. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. This is optional. This is where you use Seaborn, SNS.setStyle, white grid, and plot style. Uh, use 538. You can use any different type of plotting uh, setup that you want. This is just what we're using here. Um, if you're not using Jupyter Notebooks, you have this little line right here called percent mat plot live live, I'm sorry, in line, which will give you the same kind of feature uh, that you could have the inline uh, graphing like you've seen in the previous video. And uh, from date time, import date time, I have that here. And the reason being that I don't have that in my previous list of libraries, which is in the other video, is that it tends to run slower. So if I run this with those, it'll error out or it won't load correctly. So I have it here separate for that reason. Next, if you look at the block down below, I have, I'm creating the moving averages and I'm doing them for 10, 30, and 60 days. You could do it for 30, 60, 90, or whatever you want to do. I wanted a short term and a longer term in there. Um, so that's why I have the 10 for the shorter term and 60 days for a longer term, 30 days for a monthly moving average. So what we got is MA underscore day equals this little array of 10, 30, and 60. And for MA, which is the moving average in MA day, I have column name equals F like in function. And I have quotation marks of MA for the parentheses of MA days. Um, and it's actually the curly brackets, not really parentheses. Um, and that'll access the MA, uh, which would be like 10, uh, 30, or 60 in there. Okay, These are all for MA for these in MA day. And then stock underscore DF2 is going to be stock underscore DF, which is our data frame before. And when I'm adding stuff to it, I don't want to use the same name. So if I screwed something up, if I did something wrong, I don't want to have to go and reload my data back in again. So I'm taking the stock underscore DF for data frame of the data I had before, and I'm putting it into stock DF2. And then I'm adding a column name to that based off of the adjusted close of the rolling uh, moving average. So what this is is stock underscore DF2. So I'm using the DF2, not DF now. And I'm using the adjusted close, which is there. That's one of the data uh, columns that we had and there's the adjusted close price for the day uh, and the rolling moving average dot mean for that. And what you'll see down here by doing that for each MA in MA day, for each of these 10, 30, 60, I get this MA for 10 days, MA for 30 days, MA for 60 days. Now the thing is, is you'll see there's NAN, not a number. Don't worry about it. That's going to be for the first several of these. And the reason being is for 10 days, for 30 days, and for 60 days, it'll have, it moves it off. So you don't have those dates in there. But you can see down here below, I do have them. Uh, the uh, averages for the adjust, the adjusted close. Um, so that's how that works. And this shows you both the, uh, for when you hit stock underscore DF2, it shows the beginning and the end, kind of like the head and the tail. Um, it actually has 1,609 rows in there, 10 columns each. It's just telling you that below. Next, we're going to do is we're going to plot all three moving averages along with the closing price, which is really cool. You want to be able to see that. This is a way of measuring and seeing if your data is uh, highly variant or if it has a good trend to it, and then to be able to compare it later on to your data, to see your results in predictions and forecasting. So we got plot dot figure, figure size. Figure size is up to you. I want it to be across this page, so I've got thirteen comma four. Obviously, longer rather than width. It's length times width or length comma width. And uh, or a length comma height actually. Um, plot dot plot plt dot plot stock underscore df close label equals closing price. That's what we're doing, and then we're creating the graphs for so it's just a plot dot plot of another stock df of the m and in the column you want the ma for ten days, the ma for thirty days, 
MA for 60 days, and then you don't want it to be MA for 10 days to be the column label. So you'd want to say 10-day uh, moving average, 30-day moving average, 60-day moving average. That's what we got right here. Say so it label equals, and then uh, those. Then we've also got a title for it to make it look nice and pretty, stock closing price and moving average. We've got the X label as time, and the Y label as price, and the plot that legend, which gives us this, basically gives us the 10-day, 30-day, 60-day moving average, the closing price, which is all the elements we've added in there, and then plot dot show. Obviously, if you don't put plot dot show, you're not going to see it. So plot dot show parentheses gives us this, and that's what we end up. So we've created in this video, we've created ten day, thirty day, and sixty day moving average. We've added um, some uh, length width, uh, you know, figuring out the size of the graph, made it look nice and pretty. We've got a legend in there. Um, the title, you can see the uh, uh, labels on the sides here, time, it could be date, doesn't matter, time, date, price. And uh, then you've got your graph here, and you see, look, until you get to 2,000, they're kind of muddied together. But then once the 2,000 hits, you've got a lot of growth that happened for Tesla. Obviously, we all know that. And it tells you, you know, where it's going to go for the 10-day, 30-day, and 60-day moving average and the closing price so you can see how close those are to each other and they help you to predict stuff or forecast and give you a good measure of where things are going is that correct you know are things out of bounds are they highly variant or are they close um so that, and then next what we're going to do in the next video we're going to go into uh distributions and looking at the distribution of our data and then we'll go into actually forecasting and uh, predicting this data and seeing if we can get a good uh, accurate measurement going forward on Tesla with a uh, some really cool measurements and stuff we're going to do. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful and informational. And uh, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day.